I started shooting video a long time ago when I got my first TV news job in a small market. Not only was I the weekend anchor and a reporter, but I was also the shooter and the editor, and that's how things work in small markets. And I went through four more markets after that, and each step along the way I've worked with better and better shooters and learned a lot from them, plus learned from some network shooters who I worked with when I worked for CBS and NBC as well on some stories. So I want to pass along the tips that they passed along to me through the years. I've got this PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to give you, but I've also got a PDF that I provided for you. Let me show that to you. Just go to your Working Files folder and then open up the Other Assets, and you'll see that there's the SengStack Video Shooting Tips PDF. Let me open it up here. And if you scroll through here, you're going to see some more detail about the things I'm going to explain in a couple minutes, and also some examples. So I'm going to refer to this as I go through this tutorial, and then you can always open up this PDF and look at it on your own time. So the first order of business is to get a variety of shots. Variety is an editor's best friend, and since you most likely will be the editor, make sure that you are your own best friend. It helps to have a variety of shots, wide and tight, high angle, low angle, things like that, that help you edit the story. Particularly when you're in a pinch and you need to go from one scene to the next, and you need that one shot to help you get from one scene to the next, or you just don't have quite enough shots to fill the time allotted. So make sure you get a full variety of shots. Get an establishing shot. An establishing shot or a sequence of shots sets the story up. It says, what is this story about? So for example, here inside the PDF, I've got these two shots. The first one is the opening shot, and you might be kind of going, you know, what is that? But the next shot says, this is what it is. It's this Gannett colony. So you can see the first two shots set things up. Obviously, we're going to talk about these birds. Next order of business, follow action. That seems kind of obvious, but if something's going on in your viewfinder and it's moving left to right, right to left, up and down, make sure you follow it. And when you follow action, try to lead the action. Try to have some space in front of the action. It's more comfortable for your viewers when you do it that way. It's also easier to follow things if you leave a little space in front of it as it moves. Use trucking shots. That is, you know, don't just stand there. Move with the action if you can. So let's say you're following a baby crawling along the floor. Just get your camera down the floor level and just kind of move along with the baby, either from behind or in front or to the side, but just truck along with the baby. These are sometimes called dolly shots or tracking shots, but anyway, just move your camera instead of just standing there stock still. Find unusual angles. That is, you know, shoot from off your shoulder. Get the camcorder off your shoulder. That's normal and standard, and we're all used to seeing things from that angle. It's best if you kind of break things up a bit. Put your camera down low and shoot up, or get your camera at a high position and shoot down. Shoot through things. If you can see your subject off in the distance, but you can have some strong things in the foreground, do that because it makes it more interesting. Lean forward or backward. What I mean by this is, Instead of using your zoom lens and, let's say, six feet away from something, you can shoot that and then zoom in on it. Well, don't do that. Shoot from six feet away, and then while you're shooting, lean into the subject matter. It works kind of like a zoom, but it's much more effective and much more interesting. Or you can be, let's say, really tight on something and then lean way out, and that makes it more interesting, too. You're revealing something when you lean back. It's just kind of a good way to shoot rather than relying on your zoom lens. Get wide and tight shots. We're so used to seeing things from our own perspective, our eyes are kind of like medium angle lenses. Well, instead, make things more interesting by getting really wide shots and really tight shots. Let me just show you an example. Back here in the PDF, I got this guy down here in a field. Up there in the distance, you may kind of go, what's going on here? Just some guy off in the field with a hat on. But boom, you get in tight, and now it's pretty interesting. This guy is quite a character. And so you set things up with the wide shot, and then you make it more interesting by getting right up to the subject. Try to not use the zoom lens again. Try to walk right up to that subject. And Get the shot that way. Shoot what's called matched action. That's typically a tight and a wide shot, but where the things that are happening in the scene are exactly the same. You really need to get some cooperation from your subject when you're doing this, or it needs to be repeated action to do it that way. So let's just go back to the PDF here. Here's an example of a wide shot and a tight shot. In this case, the action is matching. Look at her hands. You can see that her hands here basically almost identically match the previous shot. Your viewers won't notice the subtle difference. It's just much more interesting for viewers to have this kind of wide shot and then the tight shot. It just breaks up the video a little bit and makes it more interesting to watch. Get sequences. This is when something happens and it's repeated. Try to shoot that sequence over and over again from beginning to end. So get a wide shot of that thing going on, get a tight shot or several tight shots of that thing going on, different angles, high and low. And then you can edit these things together in a sequence to create one version of that sequence. It's much more interesting to do it that way. Shoot what are called cutaways. If you're shooting an interview and you want to take two sound bites from that interview, you need to put them back to back, one after the other, on the timeline. 
So what do you do where they're cutting? What do you do at that point where they meet? That person will probably shift a little bit in the chair or look a little different. So you need to cover that up somehow with a cutaway, literally something where you're cutting away from something for a moment. So a cutaway for an interview might be the interviewee's hands or reverse shot of the interviewer or something like that. But on the other hand, if you're just uh, shooting action over and over again, it may be nice to get like a crowd shot. Back here in the PDF, here's a wide shot of some action going on, a bullfight in Sumatra in Indonesia. Now, if I wanted to go from this action of the bullfight to something slightly different, it would look really awkward just to go from that clip to the next clip. So I need some way to get from one scene to the next. So I get a crowd shot here to act as a cutaway when I go from this version of this scene to a slightly different version of that scene. That's a cutaway. I'm cutting away from this action, going to this, and going back to the action. Adhere to the so-called rule of thirds. Let me show you what that's all about. The rule of thirds is a standard compositional approach to getting any kind of a shot, still or video. And people call it the rule of thirds, but I think it's more like the rule of four intersecting lines or the rule of ninths. But in any event, it's called the rule of thirds. And basically, you've got two parallel lines here horizontally and vertically. The driving principle behind the rule of thirds is that the center of interest of your image should not be in the center of your image. Does that make sense? The most important thing should not be in the center. It should be someplace else. You don't want to put it where that X is. I mean, you've seen all those portraits where the head is smack dab in the middle of the image. Well, you don't want to put the head there. You want to put it someplace else besides where that X is. And the basic concept of the rule of thirds is that you want to put the center of interest at the intersection of one of these uh, four lines, basically. It doesn't have to be there. It's really not a rule. It's more like a guideline. But this is how the rule of thirds works. You want to think of your viewfinders being divided up into these nine rectangles and then put your center of interest somewhere around the intersection. You also want to put your horizon line along one of these two horizontal parallel lines. You don't want the horizon line to go down the middle because that's just plain boring. So you put the horizon line here along this top line like that or along the bottom line like that or along the bottom line here. And again, you can see the center of interest. The sun's over here near the intersection here. This mountain is by the intersection and this mountain is over here by this intersection. It's much more interesting to take things out of the center. Keep your shots steady. It's really important to bring along a tripod if you have one. I always carry a tripod with me. They're kind of clumsy and cumbersome, but it's important to have them. You want your viewers to think that they're watching something happening on the TV screen in front of them or the computer monitor. You don't want to remind them that they're watching a video. They know they're watching a video, but you want to have them suspend their disbelief for a while and just have them think, oh, look, at this is happening right in front of me. So if you shake your camera around a little bit, boom, you've broken that illusion. So try to keep your shot steady. If you don't have a tripod, try to find some other way to keep your shot steady. Lean against the wall. Put your elbows on a table. Put your camera on something solid like the ground, for example. Avoid fast pans and zooms. Again, that reminds viewers that they're watching a video. I mean, this is important inside an action movie. I mean, you want to have some fast pans and zooms when you talk about action. But otherwise, try to keep things a little bit slowed down, a little slower pace. Don't break the plane, and this is a kind of a confusing concept. Let me just show you a graphic about that. The plane is an imaginary plane that runs through your scene. Let's say you're watching a basketball game, and the plane would be the line that goes straight down the middle of the court from one basket to the other. If you have a camera on one side of the court and the action is going from right to left, if you suddenly put a camera on the other side of the court, the action would go left to right. It'd be very confusing. So you don't want to put a camera on the other side of the plane, essentially. It's a little more subtle when you talk about an interview. If you're interviewing somebody and that person's looking you know, toward the interviewer here, for example, here's the camera that's shooting the interview. If you shoot cutaways over there, your viewers might kind of go, am I supposed to see a camera in this shot? And they're kind of confused. So you keep your cameras on the same side of the plane when you're shooting the cutaway. So this is where you shoot the interview. This is where you shoot the reverse cutaway of the interviewer. And you don't put your camera on the other side of the plane. Grab good sound bites. When you're recording interviews, make sure you get some good sound bites that you can use later. But even if you're not recording interviews, you're just doing something and people are working or playing games or whatever you're doing, whatever the situation is, listen, because you want to hear good sound bites. Just two or three seconds worth of a sound bite can help break up your story and make it more interesting. So always be listening for good sound bites. And also get plenty of natural sound. You want to be able to take your natural sound and insert it in places to help break up your story. And you don't have to use the shot you got at that moment when you got the natural sound. You can always use the natural sound from one video clip and place it on another video clip elsewhere to help make it a little more interesting and kind of break up your story a bit. Use lights if you've got them. If, you know, some people don't have light kits, as they're called. Now, here's a typical example of a light kit, and not many people walk around one of these guys in their back pocket, and they are kind of expensive, but, you know, it's always good to have lights like this. And if you really want to do something well, 
you can rent a light kit, presumably. So do check out who can rent you a light kit. So even if you don't have a light kit, try to use lights wherever you shoot video to enhance the way your videos look, to give more sparkle, more depth. Plan your shoot. Know what you need before you go out on a shoot. And also know that things will happen while you're out there that will cause you to change your plans. But at least have a concept. I need the following kinds of shots to tell my story. And so always keep that in mind. You don't necessarily have to have a long list of shots, but do know in advance what kind of shots you need to do your story. Finally, get a closing shot or a sequence of shots. This is the shot that's most important. This is what your viewers will remember about your story, and you want to get something that will be memorable, something that they will hang on to for a while. And people forget to get this shot when they're out doing some video production. Remember, you need to get a closing shot. Try to think of what that closing shot will be. It could be something as simple as like capping a pen or petting a dog or a sunset, but just keep in mind, what will my closing shot be? And when you get out and do your story, you might think, you know, I've got a better one now that's happening in front of me. I'm going to get that instead. But do think about the closing shot. It is what can help make your video memorable. So I hope these video shooting tips will help you craft better stories as you work inside Premiere Pro.